I have a dream I hope will come true You're here with me And I'm here with you I wish that the earth see the sky up above Will send me someone to love her. Hi, um, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the film. It's, I really did love it, honestly. Oh, thank you so much. Um, first of all, it's such an interesting idea, I think, with two volcanoes falling in love. You don't really see that a lot. Right. Um, where did the idea originally come from, I can ask? The idea really, it, it came from my love and fascination with Hawaii, you know, and uh, tr tropical islands. And uh, 25 years ago, my wife and I honeymooned on the big island. And so that, that really blew me away, you know, once being in Hawaii, but also to see a place that had active volcanoes. And since I was a kid, I always thought volcanoes were so cool. So as I was developing the ideas, um, you know, that I was going to pitch for short films, I went to this love and this passion, this interest I had in, in Hawaii in volcanoes. And then I heard um, Israel Kamakavivoli's version of Over the Rainbow. And I was just blown away by his version of this song that I recognized from The Wizard of Oz. So I thought, what if I could combine Hawaii, volcanoes, and music? And, and as I was doing, kind of messing around, I, I just wrote on a, on a napkin, I drew a volcano with a face and said, I love you on it. And I thought, wow, there, there's a chorus for a song right there. So it just was all these little ingredients that you know, ended up into a, to a singing, you know, singing volcanoes. And then the more I history, or the, the more I studied Hawaiian geology, I just really got inspired by the science of these islands and how they're how they are created and how they are destroyed over time and it just kind of evolved into the story that it is. All right, the music the music itself I thought was wonderful and the scene was great too. Where did it, casting the two volcanoes? They're Uku and Lele. Is correct. that correct? Yeah. All right, how did, what was the casting process for them for the singing voices? The casting process was really fun. So once once lava was greenlit for one year. All I did was listen to Hawaiian music, as I searched for the perfect Hawaiian singers. I drove my family nuts, but I was really find, wanted to find the, the right singers. And in my research, I found out about a music award festival it's called the Noku Hanu Hanu Awards, and it's the Grammy Awards for Hawaiian music. So when I found out about this, you know, the way it works is it, there is a festival, or there's an award show that's like on Sunday. Friday and Saturday le leading up to it, all the musicians come to Honolulu and they teach workshops. And when I looked at this, all the musicians I were interested in were going to be at this festival. So I convinced my producer, Andrea Warren, that we had to go to this, and, and we did. And that's how we found Kwana, Torres Kahele, and Napua Greg, who, who do the singing in the, in the short. That we saw them perform, we saw them in workshops, and just really fell in love with not only their, their talents and, as, as singers, but also their personalities. Because so much of it is not just about singing, but it's understanding the story mm -hmm. and emoting through song. And we really lucked out. I, I'm so, just so moved by what they were able to, to achieve in their vocals. All right. I was like, it definitely moved me, too. Honestly, I was sitting at my computer watching the screening and just kind of like, I'm not going to say anything for spoilers, but I was almost panicking at one low point in the movie. It was kind of like, I was honestly worried it was, this can't end like this, <laughs> in all honesty. And I, I never thought I could feel that about volcanoes that just have faces. But it's, I think some of the magic of Pixar is just taking things that are like inanimate objects, like the easiest example would be Toy Story. Yes. And just making you feel so deeply for these characters really is an incredible feat, I think. Yeah, and, and I feel like that's the fun of, of animation is that you, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. We just have to come up with the ideas and then just kind of figure out how to do it. And that's the magic of animation, that animation can go places that no other medium can go. And, and what I think Pixar does so well is wrap these wonderful adventures and, you know, with places that, that you can't go, but the stories revolve around human emotions and, and things that the audiences can really relate to because like, ah, oh, like, you know, Woody's fear of being replaced by the cooler, faster, shinier toy, we can all relate to that. We all, we all have that fear or, 
you know, Finding Nemo, losing, lo losing your, ch your child and not wanting to lose the one that you have and being overprotective of it. Like we can all identify with that. But to take that thing that we can all identify with but put it in the world of the ocean is, is what animation is so unique to animation and that it can do it. And I think that's what Pixar has really embraced. And to me, that's what I love about being there is that it's, it's taking chances and it's going places where you know, no other medium can go. One thing I was wondering with the short films for Pixar, I was wondering how do they get greenlit with the ideas because there's always, they're always paired with a studio film typically. I was just wondering how exactly do you all plan that out? Like this one's paired with Inside Out, correct, this summer? This is, yes. yes. I was just wondering how exactly do you all decide this one's going to go with this one, we're going to put this one with, uh, I don't know, with another Disney film? How does that exactly work? It's just chance. You know, you're... If you're going to pitch an idea, you, you need to get in touch with development, and development will kind of have you on the radar. So when it comes time to, to do a bunch of pitches for the short that's going to go in front of the next feature, whoever has ideas is, is pitching them to a panel of directors, and then once the, it gets through the panel of directors, they may go, oh, we like this one, this one, this one, and then, then those ones that get through will be able to pitch to John Lasseter, and then John will make that final call at what the short goes. And the pairings are just timing. And what's cool about that is they're not thought through the pairing, but I think somehow the pairings are so serendipitous and in un unexpected ways that it really creates this really cool union between the, the, the short and the features, in which, which I couldn't be happier and more proud of with Lava and Inside Out, that I, I, I just think the pairing is just beyond what I could have ever hoped for. And I just feel very lucky to be part of such a, an amazing film that Pete's made. On the technical side of the film, when I watched it, I think I thought back to like the jungles and the Incredibles, how like when I first saw that in theaters in I think 2004, it, it really took me aback by how alive it all felt. And with lava, the opening shots of seeing kind of the different vegetation and animal life that's on the volcano, it looked so photorealistic. And amazing, like I didn't, I almost forgot it was animation, honestly. Can you explain how exactly have you all achieved that in y'all's long history of increasingly raising the bar in animation? Well, you know, what, what we really wanted to do with these characters was create a character or characters that are also a place. So that, you know, after seeing the film, you'd be inspired to want to go visit them someday. So. That was what was fun of taking something that, that seems real that you could identify with, like, oh, I want to sit on that beach where the, where the turtles are. Like, that looks so inviting to me. And then to reveal, oh, my God, that beach is on a character. So can you imagine being on, on that beach and look up and you've this, yeah. this giant volcano head looking down at you, you know, watching you. To me, that's just so charming, charming and fun. <clears throat> and that was part of you know going for that that type of a look to create that believability that oh I could totally believe being here, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I would totally want to be here, and then then turning the tables and saying, but but the but the mountain has features and the mountain sings, was a was a fun contrast. So kind of have that contrast of of the real the realistic looking vegetation mm -hmm. and and rock textures, contrasted with the absurdity of it being a singing mountain, you know, and, and mm -hmm. really, and the, you know, the skies is really, it's the first time that we've ever had our sets also be our characters. So that, you know, when the vegetation, even the vegetation in The Incredibles didn't move when the, when the mountain moved, you mm -hmm. know, so that was a big challenge to, to be able to, to rig a character where the vegetation oh. had, had to you know, kind of move with the character. For me, when I, emotionally, when I watch this, what I got out of like as the themes of the, for the short, for me, it felt like it was kind of a lot of trying to find the person you're meant to be with, no matter how long it takes. What do you hope for audiences to get out of Lava? Exactly that. You know, it's the power and patience of love. You know, and I think it's just a core emotion that it's probably the most visceral human emotion that we all want to be loved. You know, in whatever form, whatever form that is, and. I think we can all identify with that story of, of finding that special someone. And, you know, it, it was funny. When I was doing my research on how the islands are formed, I just learned about, you know, the Hawaiian Islands are formed on a hot spot in the, in the center of the Pacific Ocean, and the tectonic plates are kind of sliding over these hot spots. And, 
and, and creating volcanoes. And this has been going on for millions and millions and millions of years. So there's a whole chain of islands that goes from the big island, like all the way out to Asia, of, of how these, these islands and volcanoes grow and they become the islands we know of Hawaii now. And then, mm -hmm. they, sh then they fall, you know, they go away from the big island or for, off the hot spot and they erode back into the sea. So I was totally inspired, you know, by that, that emotion is like, well, what, mm -hmm. what if, if you're underwater and you have somebody up above water, do they know that each other's there? And, and wow, isn't there a powerful, that, that, that's amazing. And then right around this time, my sister got married at a, at, at the age of 43, you know, older in life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that just re really resonated with me that there is someone out there for everyone. And that's where I kind of got the idea of, wow, what if volcanoes needed love and kind of a, a love story evolved out of uh, you know the geology of Hawaii and the real situation with my sister you know kind of turned into be that little chemistry mm -hmm. thing. So again congratulations on the short I really loved it the immense creativity was just amazing. Thank and you so, and thank you, you so much for having me I've been a real pleasure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.